Experts are meeting at the University of Warwick for a conference on protecting our bees. It follows a dramatic fall in the bee population in recent years, which is being blamed on loss of habitats, pesticides and the weather. Well, our science correspondent David Gregory Kumar has been talking to people who are at the conference. So what can be done to save our bees, David? Well, Nick, as you said, there are lots of reasons for the decline of bees and other insects that help pollinate flowers. Now, these include things like the weather, pesticide use and disease. And to understand what's going on, to model how all this interacts, well, the first thing a scientist wants to do is carry out an experiment. But that's hard when you want to look at bees. You can't instruct a, a hive of honeybees to only eat from this particular field or to do certain things. You have, they, they just do what they do. Um, and so the experiments you would need to do to quantify the, the bits of the model that we're trying to quantify today would be impossible or too expensive to do. So this gathering of experts at the University of Warwick takes the place of actual experiments. Ten experts are asked a series of very specific questions to pool their knowledge and then asked to predict what bumblebee numbers will do. We've basically been trying to look at a, a, um, a range of, of factors that are challenging honeybees and, and wild pollinators and delving into our experience, um, try and assess how important those factors are. Now, those behind today's conference say the end result fills the gaps in our knowledge and is as good as the data from a real experiment in the real world. But in the end, isn't all this just guesswork? Uh, guests, so they're not guessing because they're experts. And to, to some extent, you can say it's a guess, but it's a very, very educated guess, and there's, it's the best guess that we can get from anybody else. So it's as close as possible to hard data. So. so, in situations where you can't do real experiments, you turn to a conference of experts instead. Now, you could use this same approach for things like food safety or even tackling a nuclear disaster. And by the end of today, thanks to careful and pretty intense questioning, we'll have ended up with a clearer idea of how to make decisions that will help save our bees. Nick. David, thank you.